Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on microwave engineering. For this video, I will explain what is actually Maxwell equation. In fact, Maxwell equation will be one of the most challenging tasks to understand under microwave engineering. This video, I will explain Maxwell equation in a layman term. So even without any information on microwave engineering, you will be able to understand and appreciate this Maxwell equation. Maxwell equation actually has four equation. The first two will be the Gauss law. We have the Gauss law for electric field and also the Gauss law for magnetic field. So basically this sum up the first two equation of Maxwell equation. Next will be Faraday's law. This will be the third equation for the Maxwell equation. And last but not least, Ampere and Maxwell equation. So basically this four equation sum up the electromagnetism physics for microwave engineering. Guys, if I receive more than 50 likes, then I will do a deep dive explanation on this Maxwell equation. Okay, so my next video, if I got 50 likes, I will do a clearer so-called explanation on this Maxwell equation so that you can have a better understand for microwave engineering. And also, if you're keen to know more about microwave engineering, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on microwave engineering. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me your question through the comment. Before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for song support. These are the four equations for Maxwell equation. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, the first two equations belongs to the Gauss law. Basically, the first one will be for the electric field. The next one will be for the magnetic field. The third equation is actually from the Faraday's law. And last but not least, this is actually the Ampere and Maxwell equation. So from this equation here, you can see that all this or majority of this equation actually not from Maxwell. But Maxwell is the first gentleman that link all these four equations okay, as a so-called Maxwell equation to understand microwave engineering. We will go through one by one in a layman term in order to understand the four equation. So basically from here you can see that Maxwell okay, first used this equation okay, to propose that light in fact is also an electromagnetic phenomenon. Maxwell equation may be combined to demonstrate how fluctuation in electromagnetic field actually propagate at a constant speed okay, in vacuum, okay, which is 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Okay, so known as electromagnetic radiation, okay, so this wave occur at various wavelengths to produce a spectrum of radiation from radio wave. Basically, this is actually the fundamental before you can even start on the discussion on microwave engineering. Let's go through them one by one. Okay, the first one, okay, before I go into the four equation here, okay, so let me quickly explain, okay, this is actually called the divergent. Okay, so basically divergent, basically this is what we call by divergent, which means that everything actually radiate out. So basically how does the, for example, let's say this is a electric field, how does the electric field actually divergent out from this point here? So this is what we call this divergent. Okay, if not, there's another one which is under the minus point here. So from here, you can see that how does all the electric field diverge okay, into this point here. So basically, this is what we call the divergent. And the first two equations actually form under this divergent. Next will be under the curve. Okay, what is actually the curve? Okay, so from this picture here, you can see that they actually turn around the E field or the magnetic field. So this is what we call the curve. For example, for this case here, is actually the curve of electric field. For this case, is actually the curve of magnetic field. 
same as this divergent. Okay, so let's say this is a divergent for this here. This will be E and how electric field actually diverge. And let's say this will be B, okay, which is the magnetic field. How does the magnetic field actually diverge? Okay, so basically we need this in order to discuss the first equation. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier on, the first equation is actually a divergent. Okay, so there are actually two forms of diversion. One is how does the E field actually flow out? Another one is actually how does the E field actually flow in? Okay, so let's take this as a consideration here first. So basically, this is what I mentioned earlier on. This will be the divergent of E field. Okay, why they are actually equal to this? Okay, so let's omit this vulnerability first. Okay, so let's understand this total volume charge density. Okay, so basically this, let's say we know the unit volume here. Let's say we know the unit volume here. And if we are able to gather the total volume charge density, then we will be able to know how much total electric field actually diverge. Okay, keep this in mind. Okay, so this is what we mean by divergence. So basically all these fields actually diverge. And then if I'm able to draw a unit volume, and basically from this unit volume, if I'm able to know what will be the total volume charge density, then okay, I will be able to know how does the electric field actually diverge, right? So basically, this is Maxwell's first equation. Okay, so basically, you can see the correlation between these two. Okay, so basically, this is actually called the total volume charge density. As I mentioned, if we are able to so-called circle this thing as a unit volume, and if we are able to know the total volume charge density, then we will be able to know how does the electric field actually diverge. Let's come into this vulnerability. Okay, so this, for example, can be air. So once this is actually air, then this will be applied by this equation. The divergent of the E field will be equal to the total volume charge density over this vacuum vulnerability. However, okay, we can also have different material. When we actually have different material, then this part will be under this mu r mu naught, which is the material penalty. Okay, so basically, this is the first Maxwell equation okay, in order to describe the diversion of electric field. Next, we are going to Maxwell's second equation. Okay, so basically, it's the same thing as the first equation. Okay, so now, instead of diversion of electric field, we are going to discuss about the diversion of magnetic field. Okay, why is equal to zero? Okay, so earlier on, I did mention that this is actually for E field. They actually diverge up here. So as you can see from here, okay, you can zoom over here. You can see that they actually diverge out. However, for magnetic field, okay, so basically, they won't diverge. Okay, for example, if I like a current flow, okay, you can see that these are all the magnetic field that they actually generate or in this way here. So from here, you can see that the magnetic field lines never begin, neither they end, but they actually form loops or extend to infinity as shown over here, okay, with the magnetic field due to a ring of current. So basically because of this, there's no way that the magnetic field will be diverged. So therefore, under this Maxwell second equation, the diversion of the magnetic field will be equals to zero. Okay, so basically this will be the Maxwell second equation. Let's come to the, before we go into the Maxwell third equation, guys, I need to seek your support. Okay, please help me to like this video so that this video can reach out to a larger audience. Guys, help me press the like button now. Again, if you have learned something from this video, urge you to help me by subscribe to this channel. Once again, Thank you so much for strong support. Let's take a look on the Maxwell third equation. Okay, so basically, this is what we call the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Basically, it's a fundamental principle in electromagnetism that describes how a changing magnetic field can induce an EM wave or voltage in a conductor. Let's take a look on this Maxwell third equation here. Okay, so basically, this is slightly different from the first two equations. This is what we call the curve. Okay, so this is what we call the curve. For example, here you can see that they actually turn clockwise. Okay, so if you look into this side here, you can see that it looks like a curve. So basically, this is why this is actually sound like a curve of the electric field. Okay, so let's take a look on this so-called simple animation here. 
Okay, so from this animation here, when you can see that when I actually insert a magnet okay, into this coil here, okay, let's take a look here. You can see that the voltage actually vary, quite, which means that the electric field also varies. So basically from here, you can see that when the magnetic field change, the electric field will be also changed. So this is actually described in Maxwell third equation. Okay, so you can see from here, okay, how does the magnetic field change with time? It also will change the electric field, which is the curve of the electric field. So this is actually Maxwell third equation. When I actually change the magnetic field, my electric field, okay, at the curve condition will also change as you can see from here. Okay, basically as I told you that this is actually the curve, okay, and then you can see that when I actually insert the magnetic inside the coil, the electric field also change. So this is actually Maxwell third equation. Let's take a closer look on this third equation. Okay, so this Faraday's law actually explains how electricity can be generated from magnetism, forming the base for many modern electrical technologies. So this is what I mentioned early on when we actually insert a magnetic into this coil, we actually change the magnetic field. When we actually change the magnetic field, you can see that the voltage change accordingly. So when a magnetic move towards a coil, the magnetic flux through the coil actually increase. Federalist laws actually predict and induce EMF in the coil. So basically this is Maxwell third equation. Okay, when we actually change the magnetic field, we also change the curve of the electric field. Some of the application of Faraday's law, okay, for example, under the electric generator, okay, basically they are actually used to convert the mechanical energy, okay, which is the rotation of a coin in a magnetic field into electrical energy. Okay, I won't go deep onto this here, but you can imagine that okay, basically how we can generate electric field is basically with a mechanical. So imagine like a, a coin, you actually turn the coin in between a magnet, basically you actually will have the electrical energy. Also for the transformer, okay, basically we can actually change the AC voltage level okay, by changing the magnetic flux in the copper coin. Induction, cooking, okay, so basically you can use this AC alternative magnetic field to induce current in the metal cookware that to heat this. Same for wireless charging. Okay, basically it's also under this magnetic field, they actually induce the EMF in device without direct electrical contact. So basically this is for Maxwell third equation. Let's come to the Maxwell fourth equation. Okay, so from this fourth equation, you can see that there are actually two parts here. Okay, you can see that because this is actually a plus, which means that the two parts are not related. Okay, so therefore, okay, the first part, which is called the Ampere's law, and the second part is actually called the Maxwell law. Okay, so basically, as I mentioned earlier on, this is probably the Maxwell contribution, and the key contribution of Maxwell equation is basically they actually relate the four equations together. As you can see from this video, okay, the first two is actually from Gauss law, and then from this Faraday's law, and then last but not least, which is the Ampere and Maxwell equation law. So basically, you can see that Maxwell contribution is actually combined this four equation and then make it related. Okay, so let's quickly take a close look on this Maxwell fourth equation. Okay, so basically let's focus on this Ampere's law. Okay, so this Ampere's law can be described by these two diagram here. When we actually increase the current, we actually increase the magnetic field, correct? So when we actually able to increase the current, which is the current density, we also will be increasing the curve Okay, of the magnetic field. Okay, basically you can see that these are all the curve of the magnetic field. When we are able to increase the current, we also increase okay, the curve of the magnetic field. So basically this actually explained for the Ampere law. Okay, let's come to the Maxwell law. Okay, again, this is what we have done in our secondary school day. Okay, so imagine this. Okay, so the simplest electromagnetic is just a coil of wire with current running through it. So we know that, for example, when we actually wrap the wire okay, around and variety 
magnetic coil, okay, for example, it can be an iron nail. Okay, so this actually become a so-called temporarily magnet and they actually can attract, for example, this clip okay, to the magnet. And again, you can imagine that the more voltage I put over here or the more battery I actually put it over here, the more magnetic clip that I can actually attract. So basically with this, you can actually conclude that when we actually change the electric field, we also change the curve of the magnetic field, as you can see from this diagram here. So basically, this is actually the curve of the magnetic field. So basically, you can see these four equations, okay, they are actually all related. The first two equation okay, from the Gauss law, the third one from the Faraday's law, and the last one is actually a combination of Ampere and also Maxwell equation. Okay, so basically with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, please help to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you so much for song support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.